Big Brother is getting bigger every day. This report will examine Google and how it's interacting with your portable communication devices and how they're tracking everywhere you go, everyone you know, and everything you do. The days of removable data storage and batteries are going away. We're being migrated to cloud-based storage where your data goes in and never can be deleted, where you have no aspect of privacy as you won't even be able to remove the batteries in your phones. The end of this video provides steps you can take to somewhat mitigate the intrusions on your privacy and the extent to which you're being tracked. The other day, I received a very disturbing phone call from my son. He told me that he um, was driving in his car and having a personal conversation with one of his other buddies. He is in the military, or I should say was, he just got out. But he told me that there's a thing called Google Dashboard, where you can check your Google history. And he went on that, and we're going to walk through that in a minute. And what his phone did was it automatically turned the, micro, the microphone on in the phone and recorded all of these personal conversations. Now, anyone that has a YouTube account, um, as, as you're probably all aware, you have to have a Gmail address to sign up for the account. I know at least back when I signed up for my YouTube account, which was back in 2012 or 2013, I tried using my uh, POP email address and it wouldn't take it. I had to have a, I had to actually create a Google email account to create my YouTube account. So any of those, um, those of you out there who have a YouTube account, you need to pay attention to this report. And um, those of you who have a Gmail email account, you also need to pay attention to this report. That includes Google Hangouts and um, any of the other crowd-sponsored Google sites out there. They're monitoring you too. Now, this doesn't only apply to Windows, but it applies to, you know, as I said before, Android device operating systems as well, as well as your, um, your desktop PC if you're running Windows um, 7 through, I believe, 10. So if you want to uh, check your history on there, just go to uh, the search engine, you know, the browser bar up here, type in Review My Google History, go down here, Re click on review data on your dashboard and that will bring you to this view your data and account activity in the Google dashboard then you go down and you click click on visit the Google dashboard it may or may not ask you to sign in it's gonna ask me to sign in we'll do that and it will bring you to your accounts your control protect and secure your account page now under device activity and notifications, all your recently used devices. This is very important. I want you to pay attention to this. Okay, here. It is listing my Windows machine, but it's in Buckeye, Arizona, and we'll get to that. I don't live in Buckeye, Arizona. Um, it has my uh, Galaxy Samsung mobile phone, which operates on Android, has my Galaxy tablet, and my Galaxy Note 2. Now here's something very interesting. It is not picking up my laptop. My laptop, which is on the same network I'm on right now making this report, is running Linux. So this is not capturing anything running on Linux operating systems. Now although we're just talking about uh, Google, Windows, and Android right now, I am quite sure that Apple and iOS has the same type of data collection and identification platform that Google is using for Windows and Android. Now when I first logged on um, under my dashboard and went to my device information, it showed that I was logged on in Phoenix from from my desktop, your Windows right here, after I went back during the making of this video, it indicated I was now logged on from Buckeye, Arizona. I don't live in Buckeye, Arizona. 
So what I did was I copied this address and went to this website called Webroot Bright Cloud, typed in the um, IP address for the lookup to see who owns that IP address, and it gave me the following information. Now, here under suspicious, it says that these are suspicious sites. There is a higher than average probability that they will be exposed to malicious links or payload overloads. And those are exactly the problems I'm having with my browser, especially with Firefox. Um, and I've been having them for a while. I don't live in the best area for high speed internet connectivity. As a matter of fact, high speed out here is considered 8 meg. So, I copied that IP address and pasted it in the search bar on my browser and went to this website. You can see how dog slow my browser is. And went down the list to search for this particular IP address. Clicked on it and it indicates that the IP address belongs to Quest Communications. My internet is not provided by Quest. And if you look over here on your timeline history, it shows every place you've been. And if you click here, see your most visited places, all the places you've been based on your lo location history, it shows where you went, how many times you went there, or how many different days you went there. I mean, this is just, this is incredible. Look at this. It shows doctor's appointments. It shows places you went to go eat or have a drink. I mean, how many times you've been there. The first date it was recorded in your timeline. Again, doctor's appointments. Now, if you click, now if you go and click on a specific date, check this out. It shows you how much time you spent while on the trip driving. It shows that I drove from the house to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport, where I then took a plane to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and picked up a car, and how much time I was in the car. Now, if you go log on to your personal dashboard here at Google, then you click on um, Expand All. I already clicked it, so it says Collapse All there. It tells you all of the accounts it's trolling. Any place you've ever been, look at my Android account for both of my phones here. It's got the date it was backed up, the time, the size of the backup, the files that were backed. Look at this. All of this information. It's got my, um, yeah, this is my other phone and my old phone. So it even has history in here from phones you don't even have anymore and this audio button here I have it enabled just for you know the purposes of, of showing you this but if you click on the manage button here and your mic has been remotely activated you're gonna see my mic is shut off on my phone everywhere everywhere that you know I have recording capabilities, it must manually be turned on. I don't use Cortana, I don't use the um, the Verizon uh, voice search, I don't use any of that stuff, I've never even set it up. So, you know, I have nothing here, but people who have set these features up and their mic is turned on, they're gonna see a whole list of recording dates down here where they can click on the date and it will play the audio file that it picked up and set up to the cloud and it's being stored there. And Google wants you to believe, anyway, that you can go and, let's see, where is it? This thing is uh, the delete options, you know, for those files. Well, I got news for you. You can delete it from your dashboard, but those cloud data repositories are kind of like the NCIS criminal information systems where they're add-only databases. You can't, you can't take anything out of that cloud once it's been recorded and you can see it on your dashboard. And in many cases, even if you can't see it on your dashboard, it's still on the cloud. So going back to my dashboard, and again, you know, this is going to be sparse compared to what a lot of people are going to see because I have everything on my mobile devices 
you know, turned off as far as automation, backup, syncing, all that stuff is turned off on my phones. It's probably being put up some, you know, in a cloud somewhere somehow, but it's not showing up on the Google dashboard. It's got my blogs. It has any books I've purchased online, brand accounts. I don't know what the heck that is. It's got my calendar events, personal information that I put on my calendar. Um, activity in in the last 28 days how many passwords I have and you know I've, I've been telling people over and over again don't invite me to Google plus circles and that you know but somehow I have 12 contacts in there I don't know where they came from it has all 3415 of my email conversations up in the cloud from various different email service providers uh, and location history, we just went through that nightmare. It's got any news sources that I subscribe or, or uh, stream from. It's going to have them listed there. I don't. So there's nothing on here. It's got my payments and purchase information from credit cards with what credit card I used. Now, the, this photo album here thing, when I bought my new phone back in November of last year, I went in the cloud and deleted everything that that my old account had sent up there from my old phone. I'm still using the same service provider carrier, Verizon, but I went in and manually deleted everything that was up in that photos uh, cloud up there. So when I got my new phone, look at this, 147 photos are up there. Now, even though I canceled my online um backup my syncing for all my pictures and my videos i canceled it turned it off shut it off any photo i took any video i recorded is still up there it's still now i'm gonna have to go back and delete them again but you know that's kind of an exercise in futility anyway because although you're deleting them you know from your dashboard profile they're still up there in the cloud um music i've downloaded applications i've downloaded my profile information my whole search history is on here and again oh don't worry you know it gives you um option to remove your search history items yeah but only from your your dashboard all this information is still up there um it it tell oh man everything i've searched on the internet uh for the recent reports i've done has my top query questions outlined in here Talk about invasion of privacy. I don't use Google Talk. My YouTube history is in here. I mean, holy smoke. And here, if you go under review my de devices, which was on the previous screen, I apologize, but uh, you'll find it. It's over here on the sidebar menu here. It shows all of the devices I connected with when I connected to them. And this particular feature here lost this device. This will track your location if your phone is with you. It gives the model number of the phone, everything. Your phone number's on here, everything. One thing that I want to point out, though, sitting right next to me, I have my laptop, which is running Linux. And, of course, I understand that this is Windows uh, and um, Android specifically, but it's Google that's collecting the data my laptop device even though it's plugged in to the very network i'm online with right now is not showing the laptop and when i did a web search for the same search i did to google track my history linux i came up with you know command lines but those are you know track your command lines uh track command activity but those are directly from your device i could not find anything in a search where Linux is uploading and tracking all of your personal information like Google is doing on the Windows and Android devices. And if anybody out there knows different, please let me know, let everybody know. Now, the best thing I can advise you to do to track, to stop being tracked to some degree is to go to your personal info and privacy. Now, some of this I'm not gonna show you because it contains very personal information. Uh, that I really don't want to project to everybody out there, but it has your address, your telephone numbers, your, all of your email addresses, your personal email addresses, your business email addresses, your Google accounts, it, everything is in here. Um, your age, 
um, a, if you've got a profile anywhere about you, those profiles are listed there. Users you've blocked. I, I mean, boy, this is incredible. Anyway, so getting back to what you can do is under your searches and browsing activity, turn that off. Places you go, turn it off. Information from your devices, turn it off. I would turn all of these off, and especially this one here. This um, particular little feature here can activate your microphone remotely and record conversations that you don't know are being recorded. Do not use Windows Cortana or the, um, the Android voice search and voice commands. They're printing your voice when you do this, and they're creating a digital file of your voice prints that are also being stored up in the cloud, so turn that off. Unless you want everybody to know uh, the videos that you search for on YouTube, as far as I'm concerned, that's none of anybody's business. I would turn that off. Every single one of these. I believe my ad settings are already turned off. Yeah. But that doesn't prevent them from, you know, stuffing the tube in my emails and my search browsers with advertisements. And like I said, uh, down here, there's an option to delete your account or services. Doesn't matter if you delete them, whatever they've already collected, they have, and you're not going to be able to delete that. In conclusion, this is much, too much information being centralized on each of us. Centralization means more power and control in the hands of those doing the centralizing and less freedom and privacy for everyone else.